Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. Welcome to the Geek Group, where today we're talking about ionizing radiation. <laughs> yes, isn't now, it fun? Now, you, you, you got a hold of me with this thing of like the whole radiation problem in Japan. Yes, they're having a little problem with some nuclear Did, reactors. Yeah, but now it's a problem for us. Yeah, because it's all coming across the ocean. Yeah, but didn't we do like really thorough, extensive radionuclear testing with contamination coming from Japan back in the 40s and we made sure that was all safe for us? Pretty much, yeah, but... So what's the problem? People want to know. Okay. All right, now... I thought we sorted that out. We have two survey meters here. Geiger counters. No, these things don't count anything. But they, yeah, they do. They got a meter on it. Right. Counts. You want to get millirems per hour. I'm going to pull the schematic out in a little bit, and it's okay. got a little integrating circuit in there. Look, and there's millirems per hour. Well, no, the important one is the bottom one, which is counts per minute. Okay. All right, but it's not really counting. It's got a little analog integration circuit that converts the pulses into a meter reading, and. These things aren't the greatest things for calibration and whatnot. I mean, they were made in the 50s and 60s. So basically, this is just, you're going to die. Mm, yeah, more okay. or less. Just All right. Be here, don't be here kind of thing. This one's mine. This one was yours. This one's way cooler because mine has the little Atom logo there. It says yes. Universal Atomics. Universal Atomics. Yours is a it's Universal Atomics badass. Model 4. Mine is a Victorine Instruments Company Model 6B. Okay. All right. Now... now there's a wide varieties out there. They go from Model 1 all the way up to 6B, and then there's improvements on top of that. Okay. This is, yeah, but this is the kind of thing that every civil defense squad in America has. Had a long time ago. They don't I'm have not, I'm, I, well, they haven't been made since the 60s. I don't know what they got anymore. But I would imagine somebody has a solid state version that's better now. All right. Yours wasn't working. Story of my and life. this one here, it's, it's all plastic, and you'll notice I fixed the latches. Oh, hey! Good job. Yep. Thank some, you. I was, I was on. Somebody made a comment that the latches on these always yeah. break. Gonna, so I fixed the batteries latches for it? And it's this is it's batteries. It's good to go. Now, um, you put it on times ten. Times ten. Times ten. Okay. Take this off. All right. And then open the window. And put it right next to there. There's I got one too. No, you don't. I don't have one? Yours is no longer radioactive. I don't know if somebody <laughs> stole it, but if you put that on, you'll see the needle go up. And if you hold it right open over there, and you're on times 10. Oh, yeah, it's going. Um, yours gets a little wonky. You get, it, should, it should settle out to about 0.2. Okay. Now, again, so it's an amp. What's the yellow? That's, there's a, a plastic wrap around the Geiger Muller tube. Okay. See, inside here, um, hold on down here and unscrew the end. This is neat. Uh, turn your oh, wow. power off. Yeah, there is a Geiger Muller tube. Anton Electronic Labs, Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's got a number on it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Anton Electronic Labs in Brooklyn, New York. Mine is a Victorine 6993. Mine's a 6993. Yes. But it's a 114-6993. Okay. They were made by a bunch of different companies. Okay. But it's, it's right. a standard Geiger Muller tube. Yes. Now, there's a window on this. And if the window's closed, you block beta particles. Okay. And you only pick up and gamma alpha. waves. This won't do alpha. You need a special it, probe to do alpha. You need like a so mica delicate. window. No, it's the uh, alphas don't penetrate much. The well, dead because they're so delicate. Yeah, they mm, well a few feet of air will stop it. A few you know. feet of air. The the layer of dead skin on the outside yeah, of your yeah. body will like stop. Newspaper them. will stop alpha radiation. Alphas are bad if you breathe them or eat them. Okay. If they get inside, that's a problem. But, Raising the question, which radiation is good if you breathe or eat it? Uh, none of the above. Thank you. Okay. Anyhow, <laughs> um, with the window open, this detects betas. And if I put this one on times 10. Does it have a setting for easy deezies? No, it does oh, not. Okay. And you put it on here. This will read out to be about two and a half, maybe three, somewhere in there. Now, will these pick up cosmic background radiation? Um, you do have some background radiation, and it will pick them up. OK. Now, I have you. This is actually yours, so you get this back to me. Hey, it's my new Bluetooth headset. How about that? OK. There is a. I feel like Yuri Gagarin. Phone output, headphones, all right? And it's an old style microphone connection. And. Paul. Hi. I got one headphone. You got one headphone. So you know what that means? What's that? I got two Gagamulas and a headphone! Yeah, boy! Right. Okay, I tied. Ah! Put. I got. Yeah, yeah, it works. That, it works. Put that, put, take it off your head and put it near your microphone so people can hear. 
All right. So there's the the gamma waves it's hitting. Really loud. Yes, it is. There's no adjustment on it. There's yeah, there's nothing. no volume adjustment. Now right. you'll be happy to hear yours is a bit quieter. Okay. I'm so sensitive. I'm there's a this one has a background hum to it. Though. Why are we still using the antique thing? Like you could right. put a quarter. I could, Orange but PS you said the it? magic word. These are antiques. These things are, I mean, these are a piece of history. I don't like tearing in and destroying or altering something historical if I can come up with a way of doing what I want to do with all, without affecting it. Okay. So if we put yours on times 10, you'll get a little wee. Yeah, I got, I got the wee. And yours. Oh, yeah, this works really good. Okay. You, so now, what's the difference between times 1, times 10, times Well, it's the scaling on the meter. Oh, the only thing the... Uh, you got a little knob down here, and times one, times ten, times a hundred. It's the scaling on this meter. Okay. The metering is downstream from the detection circuit. You got three parts to the circuit. You got an input, which is the Geiger Muller tube, and what happens? The way this works is they uh, they put a uh, 900 volt charge across it, and when a particle comes in, it leaves an ionizing path, and that bleeds the voltage off, so you get a negative spike. Okay. And the little power supply charges it back up again, so the next particle that comes in... And every spike, spike has a little click on the audio. That's right. Okay. Now, I didn't want to tear into these, and you have this rather old style, very old school microphone connector right there. It looks kind of like a PL series plug, but not. They still make them. Of course they do. What's it's, it a, it's a Switchcraft. It's a model... 2501F, okay. and I got from Mauser Electronics, they, they got 130 of them in stock right now. And, and you've uh, probably bought the first two in the past decade. Could be. Wow. But that will fit right on the phone connector here. I have some really old Hewlett Packard gear that uses these. Yes. Well, I had some coax from an old thin Ethernet connection. I mean, it's like BNCs with the... Uh, I have a record player that has those. Really? Yeah. So it's got those on it. Okay. So I cut my Ethernet cable in half, put a, I wanted a butt end connector, but I only had a T. Ethernet cable? This is what it was. Thin Ethernet, 10 base 10 two. 10 base two, yeah. Yeah, okay. long time ago. <laughs> Anyhow, so I put. They're still using that in certain car dealerships. I've seen it in use in the past two years. Oh my God. Yeah. They're, they're you running. Need, you need, you need to, well, we don't do. We don't do that anymore. I'm going to be nice and not say whose dealership it is, but you know who they are. Yes. Um, okay, they're, anyhow. Yeah, they still run that. All right, I'm going, to, I'm going to screw into mine. And then we have our little oscilloscope here so we can see what this waveform actually looks like. Okay. So, there's our ground. There's our feed. And one on times 10. Oh, wow, hey, there's stuff. Okay. I'm, I'm looking over here. I'm going to I'm going to put us I'm going to move our ground line up because it, it it's negative pulses. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to set the scale to 5 volts per division. Okay. Boom. <laughs> so, 5 10 15 20. There's a 25 volt negative pulse. Okay. I'm going Is to that are you actually getting the bottom of the pulse? Uh, I believe I am. Hold on. I need to set my trigger. Set it to 10 volts per division. I can't set it. I have to kind of eyeball it. All right, I'm doing single trace. Now, here we have a double pulse. All right. Okay. And if I hit it, this, it'll get another. And a triple. And we're getting both. Home pulses. run! We're getting multiple pulses. You'll notice this one, when it outputs a pulse, it goes down yeah, and it's, comes it's right it's back ferocious. up. Now, I'm going to move over to yours. Um, yours is a little different. It's got a little flip-flop one-shot circuit built into it. So when a it multi-vibrator? Uh, actually, no. It's being used as a one-shot. Okay. So it's like one pulse. Okay. And we'll put yours on time. It doesn't matter what we're putting it on because we're downstream from the, uh, or we're upstream from the metering circuit on this. We're actually reading the output uh, of the detection circuit. You're not reading. And that's because I'm only getting... Where's my trigger? Okay, we're going to have to go auto. Oh, wow. You'll notice yours, Mine's much cleaner. And yours is a much smaller pulse. That's because you're reading the output of that one shot. My pulse is much smaller, but it's cleaner, which is important. Okay, you, you're, you may have a larger pulse, but it's a dirty, icky, filthy pulse, whereas mine is clean and has smooth okay. edges. 
And let me set the trigger. There we go. Oh, that's fabulous. Okay, so there's a, all right. So this, we're getting like a two millisecond pulse. Yes, yours is also it. much pokier than mine. All right. What it's we're thicker. going, so what I've, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be good. I'm trying. <laughs> Now, what a lot of people are trying to do <coughs> is take their survey meter and rig it up to data log somehow, some way. I'm sure there's like something that's been made in this century that'll do this. Well, I haven't seen it and I went searching. And right. there's lots of people that are trying to come up with something quick and easy and a lot Without like a $200,000 piece of lab gear, that, exactly. you know, rack mount, okay. So these things, they used to be a dime a dozen. I mean, you could get them on eBay for like 50 bucks. Sure, in the 60s, you, you could get a ton of them. Well, <laughs> they've gone up in price since... Because what now happened. it's a collector's item. No, it's because people want them to figure out what's going on locally after what's coming out of the air from Japan. Oh, it's great. like the price on these, I think I've seen them around 250 bucks. Thank you, Fox for News. untested, un anything, just one. So you turn it on and then the meter moves. It's like okay, fine, two hundred and fifty bucks. Boom. So there's five hundred dollars worth of survey meters right here. Okay. All right. So lots of people are trying to come up with, with ways of interfacing to them. I've seen a lot of circuits. Most of them all direct connect. Um, I saw one guy on a website make the suggestion that you use an optocoupler to connect up to it. Okay. Because you're outputting a negative voltage pulse. Yeah. All right. Um, for this one, it was like, what, 25 volts? Yeah, it's kind of ferocious. Well, if we're, we're going to use an Arduino for our little of connection. Of course. Of course. Where's Dan? Where's Dan? Dan's yeah. not around. It's, I was hoping Dan would be here for this because I was going to do it with him, but okay. we'll do it with you. We need, Thanks. We, they didn't erase the board. We need to erase the We've board. We've got like 50 crew people. We could, you know, yes. nobody gets around to erasing the board. Nobody gets it. Mm. I had a paper on towel. On You're on it. That's you know who I should did. be erasing the board? Who? Red. Red. Of course. You're a jerk. I'm a jerk. Get the Windex. You can come clean the board. <laughs> you got the Windex. Where'd the Windex go? <laughs> I'm a jerk. Come on. Now look, I'm red. <laughs> come here. Come on down. You can clean the board. Oh, you're going on camera now. You're, you're, you're in the video. You're famous on the internet. You're the board cleaner. You're red the board cleaner. Okay. There, that's as good as it gets. Um, thank you. It's a little gift. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I had the guys bring a sign out for this video, too. Oh, yeah, oh excellent. That's okay. your prop there. I have, there's an Arduino underneath here. It's an Uno. Okay. And on top I have a prototyping shield. And I put the little... I, You're dangerous with those things. Yes. <laughs> I got a little uh, breadboard, little tiny breadboard. I, got a, I bought a blue one. Is that one. a 555? Or no, it's, yes. That is a 4N37 optocoupler. Oh, okay. So we're going to use an optocoupler. Now, for those... The, the kids at home that don't know, what is an optocoupler and what does it do? An Draw it on the board. Don't that's just what tell I'm, me. That's okay. what I'm doing. Okay. An optical coupler, this guy has six pins. Pin three isn't used. But pin one and pin two are an LED. Okay. All right. And over here... It, inside the, the chip, inside there's the an chip. LED. There's, so there's a little LED. light. There's a little okay. light. You also have an NPN transistor between pin 4 and 5 and they bring the base of the transistor out to pin 6. Okay. All right. But you don't need to use that. When the LED lights up, the light shines on, this is a photo transistor. Okay, well you got to draw the photo, because otherwise people are like, it's a transistor. Was it doing the That's LED? the symbol. No, you got to draw the symbol for a photo transistor. I don't even remember what that draw is. Draw a circle three, around draw it. Draw a circle around it. And then point a little, it, it's an arrow coming in. An arrow it's like the opposite of an LED. In. Okay, good it enough. It looks like a little lightning bolt. No, it's got, it's, it's, you've got like the little, the lightning bolt like that, and you've got. Your All right, I'll let you be artistic for a change. And that, and yeah, it's okay, fine. Transistor. All right, in any event, that's a. It's I'm an a artist, damn it! 4N37. Okay. All right, now. 
We have our uh, survey meter over here with the ground and the signal. It's on the wrong side. Wait a minute. It's on the wrong side. Pick, pick, pick. Give me a survey meter. It's, all, it's even different models. It's always on this side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to bug you about it. <laughs> all right. Now, I will admit there is one way of getting positive pulses instead of negative pulses, and that's you basically assume that the center pin is ground and the actual ground is your signal, which I don't you like just doing. You flip the you wires. You flip the wires, and that gives you positive pulses, but it's, it's still 25 volts, so we got to do something okay. in any event. Well, what you can do is connect your output here up to the LED part of your optocoupler. But it's 25 volts, you're going to blast the LED out of the water. But it's an extremely small pulse. All right. Okay. Your it doesn't have enough time to cook the LED. Yeah, it's not so much that we're going to put a we're going to put a filter between the two. Okay, just All like right. a resistor. Or? Now, one thing you need to notice on your meter because you put a capacitor in there, it's going to affect the you know you you'll limit the timing and stuff. You see your waveform? Yeah. I'm going to flip to ground here and auto. Where's ground? I'm going to put ground right on the zero line. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to DC. You'll notice the line jumped. Okay. The reason why the line jumped is there's a DC component. There's an offset to it. There's an offset. Uh, Which is not I'm uncommon not. with really crappy audio amplifiers. There. Okay, you see there's an offset. Ground, yeah. I'm going to go auto. It's a really tiny offset. Like what, two volts? Two volts. Well, that's enough that. to light up an LED. It is enough to light up an LED. So you need to do something to block LEDs that. LEDs need 1.4, don't they? It depends on your LED. Some okay. of them are as high as three, like the blue ones. Okay. But you need something to block that DC component. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw a capacitor in there. But by adding a capacitor now, because you're dealing with pulses. Right. The capacitor takes time to charge. And the capacitor will... It'll act as a filter. It's only... The one I'm using is only a 0.1 microfarad. Okay. Which is a very small capacitor. It gets rid of the DC. It gets rid of the DC. Well, it'll charge up. You've got to have something to dissipate that charge. Yes. Yeah. So you put a resistor to ground. Okay. Now... I believe the resistor I have in there is only like 100 ohm. We can use a meter and check it later. But and tie that directly there. Okay. So when you get a pulse, what you're doing is you're blocking. This is a um, you're, it's a filter. It's blocking the DC component and also it's basically taking your pulse and giving you a little flash of light for each pulse. Okay. All right. So on the other end over here, we need to detect our pulse here. So this ground, I'm going to take these grounds out because we're not actually now, grounding. Well, he's drawing us. I just wanted to clarify this for people at home. This, this IC chip is an optocoupler, and the idea is that you're converting your electricity into light through an LED, and you're converting that light in, back into electricity through a phototransistor. And what this does is allows you to have two totally separate circuits yep. that are not actually, they're not electrically connected. They're coupled by light, so it's an optocoupler. Right. This so, is, it's same concept as like a transformer for AC, for like, you know, yes. for like a, a, yeah. Whatever happens over here doesn't electrically connect to whatever happens over there. Yeah. So we can have our, 25 volt pulses, whatever, we're just lighting up a light. And it's safe over here because it's even at 25 volts, it's still really low voltage stuff. But like this, this wouldn't work at like, if you wanted to shield for a high voltage lab for stuff where we're doing signaling in Tesla lab, where exactly. you need to seal, seal against transients at like five kilovolts and stuff mm -hmm. like that, it's just gonna jump right across the physical pins. Correct, well, so, it'll yeah. arc across. Yeah. Well, over on this side, we're gonna ignore pin six. And- Could have been a friend to you. Could have been a friend? Could have been, so it could have been a contender. Could have had class. That's going to the Arduino's plus five volts. We have a 10K resistor. And over on this side, this is actual ground on the Arduino. Okay. All right. This here is going to go to an input pin. Okay. 
So, so that's our end, that's our ground. Now we've got a digital feed. We've got a digital feed. Now what are you doing with this digital feed? Okay, I'm going to feed this into one of the pins on the Arduino, and on an Arduino, digital pins or two and three are actual interrupt inputs. Okay. So I have some software written Interrupts up. like old school computers interrupts? Old school, like, like, like interrupt 13 interrupts? Very similar. Interrupt 13 is a software interrupt on, yeah. on your... Well, we're doing a hardware interrupt where the actual pin on the chip is used as an interrupt input. You can do that? You can do that. I've and seen it in software, but I've never seen it in hardware. The way, the way an interrupt works is your, comp your processor is sitting there doing something and an event occurs that says, stop, take care of this. And the process is okay, does whatever it needs to do and sends it back. Okay. And goes back to doing what it's doing. Okay. The interrupt is actually a little program, yes? See? Yeah. Paul's interrupt driven. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the interrupt fires off a little piece of code. That code is self -sta it's, it's standalone. It doesn't affect anything that the processor is dealing with. It does its own little thing. So if you have something that you want to deal with, you're going to need like a global variable, which is what okay. we're going to use. And what I've done is set up an interrupt to increment a counter. Okay. So at the start of the program, we're going to zero it, and then whenever the interrupt fires, it'll increment the counter by one, and we just let it count up for a second. And then you interface a clock to that, and now you've yep. got your counts per minute, counts per hour. Well, we're going to do counts per second, so we're displaying often. Okay. All right. Now, on our little board here, my uh, alligator clips are going to go off to our... Survey meter. There's the red one. All right. Now uh, we're going doing. We're using yours, and we're still reading. This is a good thing. Now I'm going to try and intercept this so I can actually see. Do you want to intercept it here? Or do you want to intercept it on that end? Uh, no, I don't. This is this is. That's just. This the is the serve. This is the survey meter. Yeah, I got that this figured is, out. I can see the wire. This is the LED side. I'm going to try and catch. Oh, the photo, well, the photo transition. Here, you do your thing. I'm just going to get these slide, sorted out. Slide yeah. all that just right. down, I'll, down. I'll take right. this because you're going to short it out. I okay. can see it coming. You've got, look you're at this big giant mate. Hey! What? You know what this is a time for with all this extra hanging wire coming off here, Paul. What's that? It's time for the all new jet black Gerber diesel. Gerber ninja. You need to Check flick, that out. You need to flick that again. It, no, it's, it's open. No, if, you, if it didn't flick, it wouldn't open. But... It's, it's still, it's brand new, it's very tough. There is the all new Gerber Ninja Gerber I upgraded. Um, there'll be a video about this, but I, it was time, guys. I had to retire the old one, I'm sorry, but we have an all new Gerber Ninja, and it's black now. Ooh, the, the, the little releases are a lot nicer. Oh, too. yeah, it's, it's, we're, we'll, talk, we'll do a whole video on this, but it's way better. But now I can trim your coat okay. with the all new Gerber Ninja. You can? Well, that's okay. If, it's, if the wires, if your little weedly wire isn't, you know, good enough for the front cutters. Oh, you got the little scissors. This, oh, no, they're not the little scissors. The little scissors on this, look at them. They're Holy huge crap. now. Yeah, they're way better. And just, boop, there you go. Oh, See, that's... That was easy. <laughs> it's great. So, yeah, that's the all-new Black Magic. Are they, a, sir, are they, are they a sponsor? They are not a sponsor yet. They should be. They should be. It closes great, though. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and intercept our... Uh, signal here. Okay, I have a little pin hanging out to grab the ground on. That's really 900 volts to the tube? Yes, it is. Well, different tubes take different voltages. But these tubes take 900 volts. These tubes take 900 volts. Okay, so there's, there's my resistor. There's the optocoupler. I'm not radioactive. No, I was just wondering if I'd get you bit with the 900 volts. No, it's internal. Okay, now, I'm going to have to make some setting adjustments on here. Ah, I am getting pulses. Normal. Okay, hold the, uh, yeah, give me something to detect, I'm please. packing all this stuff up. Stand all by, right, you ready? I need, I need to set my ground first. All right, set your ground. I got... Okay, there's ground. I got counts per millennium or okay, whatever. Okay, we're going to do, and this is... I'm at one volt per division. We'll change it to two until I can see what we're... Ah, there we go. 
Okay, you got gonna, a lot of pulses coming. Yeah, we are. Okay. Okay. Now, it uh, grounds that line right there. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. That's five volts. So it sits at five volts because we got a five volt pull up. Whenever we get a flash of light, the transistor grounds the output pin, and we get a little spike that goes down to zero there. Okay. Now. That little transition from high to low, we're going to set up software to capture that event. Okay. Now, when you're on there tight, you can see you're getting multiple pulses. Yeah. Sometimes they'll be very close together. Yeah. You, there's, a, there's a minimum amount of time that you can have, you know, how close together they are. Um, basically, because there's a refresh time on the Geiger tube, and also, for your meter, it has that one shot, so it'll only go yeah. so fast. M the circuitry on mine will actually operate a little quicker because it doesn't have that two millisecond pulse yeah, duration. It's just a little, it's a little negative spike. All okay. right. All right. Now, um, we had discussed that you might want to do the software as a separate part, or you just want to keep going and do the software right now. Let's do it. Okay. Um, I'm or, actually, do you want to come back? Because we've, we've covered the hardware side really well. Do you want to come back and like in the next video we'll do the software? I think that would be good. Okay. The, the software, it's not going to be a long video. I mean, there's the software, but we do need but to talk about what interrupts yeah. are. So. Okay. So we'll wrap this one. We'll come back the next time. And when people come Sounds back, like we've, we've got, we'll go through the software and how to do this. Good idea. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for coming and showing us this stuff. This is really awesome. And yeah, we want to thank everybody for watching on the live IRC and all that. Um, well, the live people are out there. So hi to all the people live on the Ustream video. And for you at home right now, um, we are now doing live video broadcasting from the studios here. And if you go to this link, you can see um, our live Ustream feed, which is just awesome. Okay. And there's That's an IRC long, for that coming. That's a long link. It is a long link, but they can just click it. OK. Look. That works? Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. Just like that. Okay. Um, but we've, uh, you see, we've got the big monitor out here. This is going to be used for the Ustream thing, where we can talk to and interact with oh, in real time. Comments. Yeah, we can, and, and like people can ask questions, be like, hey, Paul, what's that little blue thing and stuff? And, you know, and we can talk about that with the IRC. That's the idea. Okay. We're getting towards that. We're not there yet because you need to do something with the Ethernet. Or Rob, Rob was going to terminate the Ethernet, which is. It, yeah, there, there's no power to that machine. Can you? No, it's not the power to the machine. I've oh, got the plugging, other end of the Ethernet. Oh, oh. oh. There's, no, there's, no power to the there's no power to this. Well, I can plug right into the Ethernet thing. I can do that. Just, I don't know which cable it is. Well, grab them both. Grab them both. One of them. Yeah. The longer one is the one you want to play with. They're the same length, Paul. Okay, that's not it. I got a link light. Hey, hey. I'm on the internet. Okay. So when we come back and talk about the software video, we can actually have viewer comments. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Well, I'm Chris Bowden. And I'm Paul Kidwell. We want to thank you for watching. Please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, donate, and call your mom. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.